Hey, Pokemon Masters, Bunky Patobi here, and wow, okay, it's been a hot minute since I've done one of these. My top 10 worst or least favorite Pokemon of each region. I did Kanto, I did Johto, I did Hoenn, and then I just felt like the negativity was getting to me. I couldn't continue, I couldn't do Sinnoh as well. But last week saw the release of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, so I think it only makes sense for me to finally tackle the Sinnoh region with my top 10 least favorite Pokemon of Sinnoh. Oh, ooh, 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 hang on. So I think, I, if I remember rightly, maybe I forgot one in Kanto. Worst Kanto Pokemon. Who do I have on this list? Tangela? Tangela's great. What's wrong with me? That was only a year ago. I clearly have no clue what I'm talking about. Yeah, I completely missed, I think, fourth on the list of my least favorite Kanto Pokemon, although it was so long ago, I don't even know if I agree with my own list at this point. Um, but let's, who, do, who can we dunk on quickly? Let's go with Lickitung. Like, it's super forgettable. With that being said, and knowing that peace is clearly not an option, why don't you take the like button over to Sianwood City and then delete all of its moves so that it can't surf or fly off the island? That should be good. And let's jump into my top 10 least favorite Sinnoh Pokemon. So yes, Pokemon Masters, in my opinion, these 10 Pokemon are the absolute worst, but you know what's the absolute best? Today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, who have sponsored the channel before. You may have heard me describe them as this, this channel's Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. They are your protection, your armor while you're online. That's a big part of what Surfshark does, protect you while you're online. Maybe you're out and about, you're jumping on different Wi-Fi's, you don't know how secure that connection is, or maybe you've just got a really nosy neighbor who happens to know that your password is a uh, password, which by the way, you should change. So what Surfshark VPN does is it routes your connection through another location, meaning rather than your internet search, and traffic going directly from provider to yourself, it's first routed through another location. That helps keep your connection more secure, and of course that location could be another continent or another country, meaning Surfshark VPN could give you access to lots of content that's only available in other countries. Like for example, when you head on over to Netflix and you connect via Surfshark VPN, you get access to a whole slew of new content. And what's even better, if you click that link at the top of the description and use code BIRDKEEPER, you get 83% off and four months for free. There's really no reason not to do it. Click that link at the top of the description to go on over to Surfshark VPN and thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Okie dokie, here we go. Now actually something I feel negative about, 10 Pokemon that I'm not super fond of from the Sinnoh region. Starting with number 10, uh, let's go with uh, Perugly. It is low on this list because I don't totally hate it, but also I could not profess to love it either. Not only is this Pokemon the absolute worst when you're playing through Diamond and Pearl or Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, and you get to that first galactic boss in the Valley Windworks and Mars sends out this Pokemon, why is it so absurdly strong? But on top of that, this is a Pokemon Pearl exclusive Pokemon. And I play Pokemon Diamond 99% of the time that I'm playing Generation 4 or Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I already played the Pearl version very much, which means I never end up training this Pokemon, liking this Pokemon, getting to know it. I also think the pre-evolution Glamiao looks so much nicer than Progly, but then the Diamond counterparts, Stunky and Stuntank, Skuntank. I think it looks so much cooler. I think it looks so much better. So it's just never really stood out to me. And Perugly is number 10 on this list. At number nine, we have a little old Cherubi. The Cherubi line, Cherubi. Cherim, here's the thing, I don't hate Cherim. I think Cherim looks really, really cute and bright and wonderful, except 90% of the time, it doesn't look that way. It looks like this. What is this? Is this a Pokemon? How does this Pokemon stand out against the myriad of other humanoid-ish grass vegetable Pokemon? Varplume, Blossom, Lilligant, Serena, and then this. I am not interested in this version of Cherim. I'm interested in this bright, sunny version of Cherim, but you can only access this form in battle. But I've never even used one in a Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, or Diamond of Pearl run through because I've never caught a Cherubi. Because Cherubi is just one of those Pokemon that lives in the honey trees. And the honey, look, the honey trees are really fun as a hunting method for catching specific Pokemon. Something where you're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to spend weeks and weeks playing Diamond and Pearl, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. I'm going to spend so much time playing it. So therefore, I'm going to have loads of time to hunt a Cherubi specifically to use for my team. But most of the time, when I'm playing through a run through of Diamond and Pearl, I'm traveling through the game and after I've passed the honey tree, there's no reason for me to come back. So I never do. So I never pick up a Cherubi. And again, like what's the difference between this Pokemon and a Bound Suite again? 
I don't know, they're the same Pokemon. It's just ultimately, I think, quite a forgettable Pokemon from the Sinnoh region for me. In eighth place, for a similar reason, we have Burmy and its entire evolution line. I think it's really interesting that it's a split evolution and one of the evolutions has multiple forms, but I think that makes Wormadam so much more memorable than Mothim, especially given that Mothim is already a discount Butterfly or Butterfree. It just doesn't stand on its own. There's nothing about me that really is like, oh yeah, I need to catch a Burmy, I need to train it up into a Mothim. But even Burmy itself, it's just not particularly interesting. And isn't it like really, really similar to like, uh, Spwepper's pre-evolution, um, and Levani's pre-evolution? What are they even called? I genuinely don't know. I know Pokemon, but I don't know. Why don't I know this? Oh yeah. Scatterbug. Isn't a Scatterbug just a Burmy just without the leaves? And then isn't, is it Swaddle? Isn't a Swaddle just a Burmy? I don't know. I just feel like I'm like conflating a lot of Pokemon together here, but this is the point. Burmy has sort of just lost its identity for me, as well as these other Pokemon. They're all just the exact same Pokemon in my brain. And the thing is, with Burmy's form changing, that would be really cool, but like, when in the story do you ever have a Burmy and naturally come across the Trash Cloak or Sandy Cloak version? It's just the normal grass one is the one that you encounter all the time. So sadly, it's on this list. In seventh place, we have, and I am a betrayer of the bird keepers here, Chatot. I wish Chatot had an evolution in Diamond and Pearl. It would, oh, because it's not like a bad looking Pokemon. And the idea of a musical note bird Pokemon is kind of cool. It's just like, where do you even catch Chatot? Do, do you have to trade for it in the games? I've just never once looked at a Chatot and thought I need to own that. There was the whole thing with the Nintendo DS in the original days that you could use the microphone so that you could use its chatter attack and you could say all sorts of obscene things, which I, you can't do anymore, thankfully. But yeah, Chatot is not a Pokemon that I'm like, it, it, as a bird keeper, you know, you're looking at the Sinnoh region. You got Staraptor is right there. Chatot just isn't particularly interesting. And as I think like parrot Pokemon go as well, like I think they chose really bad colors. Like I think you could have gone for the parakeet green or you could have gone for the classic like red uh, parrot, but Chatot, it, I don't know. It's just not a Pokemon that's particularly appealing or even memorable to me. I think the most it stands out for me is as part of that villains team in the Manaphy movie. And just cause he was a pirate. Uh, yeah, a parrot Pokemon. You could have done so much. Number six, just to throw more shade at Lickitung. Licky Licky, it's evolution. Again, Lickitung is sadly one of the more, in my opinion, forgettable Gen 1 Pokemon. And here it gets an evolution, which is equally forgettable and really weird because the way that it evolves is through the move rollout, which when you look at the trope for Lickitung being a big tongue Pokemon, it's so strange to me that they decided to make it roll out focus. It, it feels like they haven't got a clear focus. Like, is this Pokemon about its tongue or is it about the rolling or is it, I guess it's both. It just, there's not a clear focus. Plus Licky Licky to me just doesn't look like a very natural evolution of Lickitung. I don't know why it seems almost too humanoid uh, for my liking. I really feel like Lickitung is the better of the two. And that, as you discovered today, made my bottom 10 Kanto list. So uh, yeah, there you go, Licky Licky. In number five, we have Krikatoon. And look, I'm gonna tell you this, the one redeeming quality that Krikatoon has is that cry. Dee Lee Lee Whoop became the nickname for my Eldegoss in my uh, Pokemon Shield run through last year. And I love Eldegoss and I love the name. I think it's great. But Krikatoon itself, no, I, I, I'm sorry. But a red bug Pokemon with scythes? Yeah, we have Scyther and Scizor. Both of them are so much cooler than Krikatoon. And it's a shame because I really like the look of Krikatot. I think Krikatot as a pre-evolution has a lot of potential to evolve into something cool. But Krikatoon, it just ain't it, Chief. With its dastardly mustache, I get it. It's got ties to music and stuff. I don't know. For me, Krikatoon is just like, again, this is the region that really suffers with those early bug Pokemon. I've never really been incentivized to use one. And I think if I ever do use a Krikatot in one of my run throughs, I'm probably just going to keep it as a Krikatot and see how, what that challenge is like. But speaking of a pre-evolution that's bad, we move on to number four. Mantike. Sorry, Mantike. Look, there's a bunch of cool baby Pokemon in this generation. I don't have anything against baby Pokemon. Bonsly, Happini, Munchlax, Riolu. They're all adorable. Mantike is adorable, but it's, it, it, no, uh, I don't know. Maybe I am wrong putting Mantike on this list, but it's just a Pokemon that I don't find particularly, I don't know, interesting, appealing. It's not something I want to go out of my way to catch. And Mantine was never a Pokemon that when generation four was brand new that I was like, 
Oh yeah, I can't wait for Mantine to get another evolution. Not something that occurred to me. Pseudo Wudo getting a pre-evolution, that was kind of interesting. Mr. Mime getting a pre-evolution, that was kind of incest interesting. Chansey as well, but uh, Mantine, no. And again, it suffers from that same thing of like, at what point in the adventure are you supposed to catch this Pokemon? Because I'm pretty sure it's not available until quite late in the game, and by that time, you would just want a Mantine, a Pokemon that you probably don't want on your team because of its quad electric weakness, and that you wouldn't want on your team that late in the game. So it just fails to find a place on any Sinnoh team for me, and uh, so Mantyke, I'm sorry, you're quite low down on this list. Maybe it should be a little bit higher up so it's not as bad, because the design is kind of cute. But with that being said, we're gonna move on to the other baby Pokemon that I don't like, which is number three, Badoo. Badoo, Badoo, Badoo. Look, Roselia, I, I think is great. Roserade, I think is great. Badoo is just too weak. And I get it, it's a baby Pokemon, but on that starting route of the Sinnoh region, first of all, one third of the time, whenever I pick a Turtwig, I'm never going to pick up this Pokemon. But then on top of that, like, Roselia already seemed kind of weak in the Gen 3 games. It wasn't a Pokemon I particularly went out of my way to grab, so I was never going to want to grab its pre-evolution. And especially because it's an Evolve via Happiness, surely the better thing to do is just pick up a Roselia somewhere on your journey and then evolve that into a Rose Raid. Nothing can compel me to want to catch a do and use Absorb. Plus, on top of that, it's kind of famously one of my least favorite Pokemon because in my original top 10 worst Pokemon ever of all time, Badoo was the thumbnail for that. So now I fondly think of it as one of my least favorite Pokemon. So, sorry, Badoo. But look, you're not the worst on my Sinnoh list, and in that original video, you were number 10, so clearly, technically, you've gone up. I have fond memories of you now, see, as my worst Pokemon, so Badoo's good now. Moving on to number two, a tie between Mesprit and Azelf. Because Mesprit, Azelf, and Uxie are all the exact same Pokemon, and Uxie is the one that I ha think has the nicest color pattern. That's it. You have to understand, before Generation 4, it was Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno 3, different Pokemon that completed each other as a trio. Then Raikou, Entei, and Suicune. Then Regirock, Regice, and Registeel. But now we get Mesprit, Azalf, and Uxie, and they are three of the exact same Pokemon. Why do we need three of them? They, they're the same. Personally, Uxie is the one that I think looks the best, but if you prefer Mesprit or Azalf, fair enough. The sentiment still stands. Two out of three of these Pokemon are just wasted Pokedex slots in which different legendaries could be a focus or in which they could have just done something a little bit more creative. So for me, yeah, Azelf and Mesprit are my number two, but they are not my number one, my least favorite Sinnoh Pokemon right now. I have high doubts as to whether any playthroughs of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl are gonna change this, but we're gonna go with Lumineon, a Pokemon that has infamously become, in my mind, the most forgettable Sinnoh Pokemon. Several times I have done run-throughs of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, gone to play through the game and gone, hey, what am I missing from my Pokedex? What are these two water Pokemon? And it's Finneon and Lumineon. And Finneon, I don't mind so much. It's just, you know, a generic fish. Lumineon, I don't know what its place is as a Pokemon or what it's doing in the world of Pokemon. It's just blue fish, and I would levy that same criticism against other Pokemon, including Gen 1 ones like Seal, which is a seal. But Lumineon is very forgettable. I don't even think I know where you catch one. I think you have to fish for a Finneon around Canalive, which again is quite late for the Sinnoh adventure, and so I'm super unlikely to pick one up for my team, and I'm super unlikely to prioritize this Pokemon over other water Pokemon in any other region because there are more water Pokemon than any other Pokemon, meaning its, co its competition is really high. And that is my number one least favorite Sinnoh Pokemon. But of course, I'm going to hear in the comments how wrong I am, so I want to hear from you how absolutely wrong I am and what your list is looking like. And once again, a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Don't forget to use that link at the top of the description and use code BIRDKEEPER to get 83% off and four months for absolutely free. What are you waiting for? Thank you for watching, and of course, so high Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by BIRDKEEPER TOBY. That makes you a Pokemon Master. I still just can't get over how much love this channel has. Thank you for the support of my patrons, and especially the big patrons of the month, JD Gottlich, Michael Horn, Chupoki Atmos, Stefan Peters, Pony Bliss, and Jed Rubin. Thank you.